CSIS 1430 is filmed before a live studio audience. Okay, let's dive in. HTML, what the heck is it? Why do we care? What's it all about? What's the point? So on, so forth, and whatnot. Okay, so before we get to HTML, right here on my desktop I have a PDF. So if you're going to read or look at a PDF, what do you need to be able to view a PDF? Adobe? Yeah, Adobe Acrobat, right, reader. But you need some sort of specific software that's designed to read it, right? So for example, I have Notepad here. This is just a plain text editor that comes with Windows. Can I open this PDF in Notepad? Yeah, you can open it, but what it, it won't display the PDF. It displays the code, right? This is the PDF code, and who knows what's going on in here. But Notepad doesn't know how to interpret it. So you need a special software to be able to interpret it. Well, why do I tell you all that? Because that's all a web page is. It's web code that a special piece of software knows how to read. We're going to learn how to write web code today, but what is... What's the special software that reads our web code? The web browser. The web browser is the special software that reads our web code, right? So we're going to write some web code in just a minute, and we're actually going to use Notepad. This is going to be my kind of my whiteboard here as well. HTML stands for Hyper Text Markup Language, and I should have put that text on its own line there. Sorry about that. Hypertext markup language. So what, forget about the hypertext part of it for just a minute. What is a markup language? Okay. It's just like what it sounds. It's, it's a language used for marking up documents. Like literally, you know, you ever get a, a an assignment back from a teacher and they've marked it up in red, right? A, a, an English paper or something like that. Well, imagine a world before we had computers and you wanted to publish a book. You have a book and you want to publish it and you don't have on-demand publishing like we do today. So what they would do, you'd have your typed up document, right? Your just regular type document. And so let's take a look at a page in here and we can see um, like this heading right here is bold, right? The heading's bold. How do you tell the printer to make it bold? You, in the margin, you mark it up. You put a little B saying this is supposed to be bold. Or how do you tell them that this is supposed to be italicized or that there's, these are supposed to be bullet points? You literally mark up the margins and you put little notes on the side that mark it up telling the printer it's supposed to be bold or italics or whatever. That's all HTML is. I mean, it's, that's, it's nothing more than that. It's really that simple. So how does it all work and what's the point? And, and let, let's look at a little history that will kind of put it into perspective. So imagine that you are uh, in the government and you are working on a strategy in case that you're ever invaded by a foreign country. If you are in enemy territory, the big thing you want to do, take out the enemy's communication. Take out their communication, right? The reason you want to do that is because you want to prevent them from communicating, hey, we're being, on, we're being attacked. So the United States government decided we don't ever want that to happen to us. So what'd they do? They created a network of computers that are connected together in such a way that if you destroy one computer, you still can communicate to all the other computers. We call that the internet, right? This was developed in the 1960s, actually. Maybe even the 50s, long time ago, okay? Long time ago. A lot of people don't realize the internet's that old. And so think about it. Take something like, what's the biggest website in the world? Google, probably? What if a bomb went off and destroyed Google completely, like all Google headquarters was gone, every building, every computer, everything. Anything Google related, poof, gone. Does the internet go down? Nope, still there, right? That is what the project was, right? So that was a, a military thing. Now, over the years with the internet, you had um, emails, you had forums, you had chat rooms, but these were all like these text-based things that very few people even knew about. Not very many people knew at all. And it wasn't until the 90s, 1995-ish, when the web, what we know as the World Wide Web, even became a thing. So that's probably the newest part of the internet. And the, it was designed by a guy from, you, know, you guys know the uh, Swiss laboratory CERN, where they have the Hadron Collider and all that, the, that stuff. One of the guys there named Timothy Berners-Lee, he created this idea of, I want to create a language 
where I can have my research paper and your research paper and your research paper and all of them linked together so that if, if I'm writing a, a research paper about nuclear physics and you've written one about nuclear physics, you don't have to mail me yours. I can just you know, see it somehow on this new internet thing, air quotes, that we have. And so he came up with this language where you can link documents together, and that's what HTML is. That's where the hypertext part comes in, where you're linking the documents together. So think of think of a, a, any paper you've ever written for for college or high school or whatever. It's just a word document, right? It's not it doesn't look pretty. It's just you know you got some bold heading and a subheading and and some text, right? Maybe some bullet points. That's all the language did at first. Now with the advances of the web technology, we've made it look pretty and all this other stuff. But the basic language it just is meant to make something that you can display and look at. So every day when we come to class, I'm going to ask you a question, and here is the answer. Tags, attributes, and values. The question is, what are the three foundational components of HTML? Tags, attributes, and values. Tags, attributes, and values. Look at it, learn it, live it, love it. I'm going to ask you every day. Tags, attributes, and values, okay? So what are those things? Well, let's start with, let's open up a new document here. So I'm going to write some HTML code right now. And I'm going to start by using a tag. And the tag is the HTML tag. And this is what it looks like. That's it, the HTML tag. So we'll talk about the components of it in a minute, but what this tag does is it says, hey, browser, hey, software that knows how to interpret HTML code, the browser, the following that you're about to look at is HTML. Read it as such. Don't look at the code, render it out, like run the code. Like that PDF a minute ago, we just saw the code. We didn't see the live, what it's supposed to look like, right? Okay, so tag number one is HTML. The next tag is what's called the head tag, and then we'll look at the body tag, and then we'll, we'll stop for a minute. Listen very carefully to this one. This is a very common mistake that new programmers make, or new web developers make, okay? Every single line of HTML code you make from now on, the rest of your life, goes between the head tag or the body tag, nowhere else. So you cannot put HTML code here. You cannot put it here. You cannot put it here. You cannot put it here. You can only put it either here or here, between those two tags, right? Okay, otherwise your code is invalid. So what's the difference between the head and the body? That's a, an important question. The head is information about the web page, which we're only gonna see one little teeny thing about that today, and that's it for now, for a couple months probably. The body, though, is where everything else goes. That's the content. That's your research paper that you wanted to share with your colleagues, right? That's what goes there. So we're gonna actually make our research paper right now. And I'm gonna use a new, another tag here called H1, which stands for heading one. Think about your, your homework assignments, your research papers that you do in, in your classes. You have a heading, right? It's the name of this, whatever the name of the assignment is. So this is uh, my research on lizards. Every tag has an opening tag and a closing tag. The closing tag has this little slash here. That's it. That's how you determine the two. So right now, this is a valid, legitimate HTML document already. So I'm going to save it, and now if I want my browser to understand that this is HTML, I have to save it as a .html file, right? So I'm going to save it here on my desktop, and I'm going to save it as lizards.html, okay? Now you look on my, my desktop here, and what appears? Look at the file that just appeared there. What do you notice about it? It's, yeah, it's the icon is, is the browser, my default browser, Google. And if yours was Firefox, it'd be the Firefox browser or Edge or whatever, right? So if I double click on it, poof, we have research lizards. That sounds like lizards that are doing research. I don't think that's what I meant, but <laughs> we'll go with it, okay? Research lizards. So that's my document and the browser knows how to interpret it and the browser said, oh, you have an H1 tag, therefore, you shall be this big and this bold and this font. And if I were opening it up in Firefox, it would look slightly different, but roughly the same. If I open it up in Edge or IE or Opera or whatever, it'd be a little different, but roughly the same. 
Okay. So the next piece is I'm going to write my very first paragraph about lizards. Okay. Lizards are great. My extensive research here. So we have this new tag I've just thrown on the screen there, the P tag. What do you suppose that stands for? Paragraph, right? Now, with the H1 tag, there is also an H2, H3, all the way up to H6. Paragraph, it's just P. There's no P1, P2, P3, it's just P. Because paragraphs, you have an infinite number of them, right? Who knows how many paragraphs you have? Well, H1 and H2, these are heading, subheading, sub, subheading, and so forth. So I'm gonna show you what that would look like real quick. Okay. So now if I refresh my web page, I saved my document, refresh my web page, and we get this. There's my paragraph. And these are my H1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Notice how they're progressively smaller, right? Because they're headings. Just like in Word, a Word document, you make a heading and then maybe a subheading and so on down the line. It's the same idea. Oh, yeah, good question. So the, his, the question was, where is the code? Is it always in Notepad? It's in whatever I choose to open it in. So you can open it in Notepad, you can open it in Word, you can open it in anything that can edit text. We're actually going to use a better editor than Notepad in just a minute. This, the only reason I'm using Notepad right now is to prove to you that it really is just text. It's just plain old text. It's nothing fancy. But in a minute, we're actually going to use a better uh, text editor. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So... Um, just keep in mind the purpose that this whole reason this existed was, again, to link documents to each other. So let's talk about linking the documents. I'm going to get rid of this stuff here now. Okay. Let's say that I'm going to link off to Skyler's research paper about lizards. So I'm going to use this tag right here called the anchor tag. I've wrapped the word lizards in an anchor tag. And what's going to happen when I click on lizards, it's going to link off to some place. Okay to Skyler's document. He's also done research on lizards, all right? So when I refresh it here, notice my lizards didn't turn into what we know as a link, okay? This is where our other part of HTML comes in, attributes. So everything we've looked at so far are tags, right? The little angle brackets, we call them angle brackets. They're just the less than and greater than. Now we're gonna look at attributes. And inside of every tag, you can place an unlimited number of attributes, okay? So I'm going to put an attribute inside the anchor tag to tell it where to go when I click on it. What's the purpose of all the tags? They tell the browser, hey, here's what I am. Do with me what you do with me. Right? I am a paragraph. Do with me what you do with paragraphs. I am an H1. Do with me what you do with heading ones. I am an anchor tag. Do with me what you do with anchor tags. But what do you do with anchor tags? Well, I go, I send you somewhere. Where's the somewhere you're going to send me? Well, right here, I'm going to tell it. So the attribute is called href, okay? And the way all attributes work is it's the name of the attribute equals something in quotes, just like that, okay? What do you suppose is going to go in those quotes? The link to, to the other lizard paper, right? What do you suppose, and that's the other part of our three set of words here, values. The value is the link I'm going off to, right? So let's go find the research paper about lizards. We'll just look up lizards real quick. And we'll go to lizard wiki. Grab that link and stick it right there. Okay. So now you can see here's the anchor tag. That's the opening tag. Now listen carefully to this. That part that's highlighted, that is the opening tag, right? Before the opening tag was simple, like the little H1. There's nothing there. But now that we've stuck some attributes in it, it looks a little more involved but it's just the opening tag. That's where attributes belong. They belong in the opening tag. They belong after the name, so after the A in this case, and before you close out the little angle bracket right there. So the question was, th this space right here, does that have to be there? And the answer is yes, because if not, and we have something like that, then the browser thinks this is a tag called ahref or something weird like that, right? But the space there, then it knows how to interpret it. So if I save it and refresh it, and now lizards are great, and I click it, and it will open up the wiki page that we put in there, okay? But look already how far we've come to making linkable documents that are hypertext markup language, right? We've marked up our language, and we told it, okay, this is going to be an H1. 
And remember I told you you could just put a bold, right? Look at this, B. That's literally how you make a bold. Just put a B around. Now lizards will be a little bit more bold. Well, it's already bold. That's part of being an H1. You're already kind of bold. So let's put it around great here. So I have B wrapped around great, and now when I refresh, you'll see great will become bold. See that? I could put italics there, and it would turn to italicized. Remember, we're just marking up some text. If this were a Word document, you would be highlighting it and clicking the little B thing at the top, or the little I, or the little U, or whatever. Well, here, we're writing code that does the same thing, okay? So big picture, that's HTML. I mean, it's really all there is to it. It's not that complicated. Hopefully at this point I've convinced you that it is just plain old text. It's nothing fancy. You can write it in any kind of text editor. Well, Notepad is not meant for, it's just not very good. So we're going to use a better text editor that I like, and it's called Notepad++. So I'm, I've already got that installed. We'll talk about installing that a little bit later today. Don't worry too much about it right now. Okay. But now notice a few things here. I have some syntax highlighting, right? Now I, all my tags are orange, my text is white, my green is my attributes, and the yellow is the value of the attribute. Makes it a little easier to read. There's a lot, there's a lot of other features too that, that uh, this has that we'll get into as we go along throughout the semester. But let's talk a little bit about this. What's going on here? I have a paragraph tag. You see I've got the open and close highlighted here. Inside of that I have an anchor tag. And in fact, let's, let's change this a little bit and let's make the word lizards also bold. Now look what happens when I refresh it. Lizards got a little bit bolder. Do you see that? It's hard to tell because it's a different color, but it got a little bit bolder. Okay, why did I do that? What do we have going on there? And why, Jeff, do you have Russian nesting dolls on your table? Because think about when you learned about parentheses in math, you have to close the parentheses from the outside in, right? This is the same thing. I have to close that P tag on the outside and then on the inside I close the anchor tag and the inside I close the B tag. But take a look at the nesting dolls here. If I want to put this all back together nested properly, I have to close this little teeny one first. Right? I can't, you know, I can't put this one on it or whatever. That's, it's out of sequence. I have to put the little teeny one on first. The problem is sometimes I see developers try to do something like this where they move they try to close it on the wrong spot, right? So what does that look like in the code? It looks like something like this. So now what's happening here? I have an anchor tag here, and then I open, for want of a better way to put it, another parenthesis, right? It's the second parenthesis. But then I close the outer parenthesis, the anchor tag, and then the bolt. That's out of order. See that? Just like the nesting dolls, you want to do them in the proper order. So let's fix that so that's not the case, okay? The question was, if, if I have the B back the way I had it in the wrong spot, what would happen if I publish it? And the answer, sadly, is it depends on the browser, which is another reason you got to be so careful about your syntax. So sometimes it may not be an issue. Where it can get weird, uh, I've had situations. So let me give you an example here. Let's move this anchor tag here. I've seen this where maybe you left off the anchor tag or something like that. And here's what happens when you do that. Everything becomes a link, right? It just goes to the end of the document thinking that that's where the link's supposed to end. And so if I tried to put like the anchor tag outside of the P tag or something like that, then it thinks that I'm trying to link that and it's all weird and, and screwed up. So yeah, proper nesting is critical. It can mess you up. Sometimes with that little B, it's not very noticeable. And if, when you try to run your code through a web validator, it won't work if you have the B out of whack, but it may not do anything in the way it renders. So depends on the browser, depends on if it's on a mo mobile device and so forth. That's a very good point. We'll get into accessibility later, but um, what he brought up was that if you have somebody using a screen reader, somebody who's uh, visually impaired and they use a screen reader and they can't see, those tags tell the screen reader what they are and it can mess things up pretty pretty good so I'm glad you brought that up yeah okay so next thing we're gonna look at two more tags right I've, you've already learned what head HTML body h1 through 6 paragraph anchor bold I and mean, it's a bunch of them now by the way for the record bold is kind of gone the way of the dinosaur right now what we use is a tag called strong because 
there's a, a huge movement in the HTML world to separate the code from the style, right? And if I have a tag called bold, that's a style thing. But if I have a tag called strong, I'm just saying this is somehow strong. That what what does that mean? Later, I'm going to learn how I'm going to teach you guys how to make strong mean whatever I want it to mean, right? I can make it mean bold. I can make it mean red. I can make it mean blue. I can make it mean a bigger font size, italic, whatever I want it to mean. Right now, the default for strong is just bold. It just does bold. Later, we're going to learn how to make the elements do whatever you want. I can make any element do whatever I want when I learn when we learn about CSS. Right now, the web browser has what's called a style sheet. It has its own style sheet, and its style sheet says, hey, if you are looking at an H1, make it that big, make it that color, make it that font, make it whatever. And so we're going to learn later how to write our own style sheets that override the browser. So we can say, oh, we don't want H1s to look anything like that. We want them to be purple, and we want them to be chiller font, and we want them to be 800 pixels big or whatever, right? Whatever we want, okay? We'll learn how to do that. That's the CSS, so that's a ways out. So now, I want to embed a YouTube video into my lizard document. So we're going to head over to YouTube and just, uh, let's see if we can find a video about lizards. Okay, here's one. So let's click on that. Here's the web page that we're going to, or the, sorry, the YouTube video, and I'm going to share it. That's how we get the embed code. Google just gives you the code, or YouTube just gives you the code. So click on share. And now, right here is a link. If you click copy, you can use that to email it to your friend. Like, hey, check out this cool lizard video and just email them the link, right? You can do that. Or you can click Facebook and it'll make a post about it. Hey, check out this lizard thing to all my Facebook friends. Or I can tweet it out. But the one we want is embedding. So I click embed and it brings up this code here on the right. But all you want to do to get that code, just click copy. And now you've copied that code. And you literally just paste it into your code. Now, where am I going to paste it? we're not gonna paste it outside of the body, right? We're not gonna paste it outside the HTML. We're not gonna paste it between the two tags, right? So it's content, so because it's content, it goes in the body, right? This, this is just the YouTube code. They said, hey, if you want, YouTube built this, right? They're like, hey, if you wanna put our videos into your website, feel free, we'll give you the code. And you put that in your browser, when the browser renders it, it'll know how to find everything. And it'll put the video in there. Behold, now if I refresh, there is a lizard video embedded onto my website now. Okay? Now, but look at what's happening here. It's just a tag, right? It's the iframe tag with the width attribute, the height attribute, the source attribute, which there's the source right there, the frame border attribute, the allow attribute. These are all attributes you don't necessarily know, obviously. But these are all just attributes inside of a tag with values inside of the quotes. That's it. Okay. So here's what makes you a good developer, good web developer. You got to learn the tags. Any guesses how many there are? There's about 65, 70 of them, somewhere in that range. Now, I'll be the first to tell you, I don't know all the tags. I never learned them all. You don't need to learn all of them. There's some that exist that I've never used. There's some that, I, that exist that I don't know what they do. There's some that exist that I don't know that they exist, right? There's a whole bunch of different things. But you gotta, like some of them, you gotta know. You gotta know head, you gotta know body, you gotta know HTML, you gotta know anchor tag, paragraph, heading one through six and so forth, okay? So I'm gonna show you where to find all the tags. And there's a link to this in your, um, in your resources. I'll show you how to find that in just a second too. w3schools.com slash tags. So right here is a list of all the tags, every tag, and they keep it current and updated. This is not the official World Wide Web Consortium documentation, but this is a nice organized version of it. So let's scroll down here. We just looked at the anchor tag, right? Here's anchor right there. I click on anchor tag. First of all, it tells me defines a hyperlink. That's what it does. Okay, let's click on it. And now it gives me the syntax. Here's the syntax. There's one, it's using one of the attributes right there, href. You wanna see the other attributes? Scroll on down and here they are. There's a download attribute and it tells you what that does. There's an href attribute, which we already learned about. There's a target attribute. There's a bunch of different attributes here, okay? If I click on the try it yourself thing, it just takes me to this page where I can edit the code and render it on the right. So on the left is the code, on the right is how it looks in the browser. So I could change this to say, 
um, visit Stone Cold Magic. Now when I run it, it says visit Stone Cold Magic. Now it's still gonna go to W3 Schools when I click it, because that's what your href tells it to do, right? But the text there is different now, okay? So that's a really good resource. Every tag has tons of different attributes. There's some attributes that work in all tags. If you scroll down a little further here, you'll see global attributes, right? So click on global attributes, and all these work in all tags, right? We're gonna learn about a lot of these. Don't worry about memorizing this list or anything weird like that. Just know where to find it and know what they do. That's the most important thing. Know what, it, what, know what a tag is, know what an attribute is conceptually, and you'll be okay. All right, one more tag, the image tag. Now the image tag is one of a small handful of what we call self-closing tags. It, the, so it's, the image tag is IMG, okay? That's the image tag. There is no such thing as that. The closing tag there, that's not a thing. That does not exist, okay? So it only looks like that. There's no closing tag. The reason for that is because usually there's a tag, you put stuff between it, right? What would I put between the image? Nothing, because I'm gonna tell the file where to find the image inside as an attribute. So let's get rid of that so we don't throw anybody off. The attribute for this is source. What is the source of the file? SRC. Remember, attribute equals something in quotes. That's the way it goes, okay? SRC. So what do you suppose goes in quotes? The location of where the image is, right? Okay, so let's take a look. Lizards, images. So let's do this colorful one right here. Now, I want this URL to put into the link here. Look at that URL at the top. Is that what I want? No, that's the search query. Don't You don't want that. That's a big, nasty search query. What I want is just the actual location of that file. So right-click on it and go to open image in a new tab right here. And there's the image right there. And that is the URL. So I copy that. And it goes right there in my source. There you go. Now, when I look at my lizard page, got this humongous image of a lizard on there. Now, there's a problem here. This rd.com, I don't know who that is, but that's somebody's website out there. My webpage links to their webpage, which is great. That's what the web was for, linking pages. But I'm using their content to display on my page right now. I'm using their picture of that lizard. What if their server goes down? then I can't get to that picture and it won't display and I'll have a broken image link on there, right? Um, so let me, in fact, I'll just change this to a different scaled one or something like that. And right here, I get this little uh, broken image icon right here because if their server went down, that's what I would end up having. Well, the last thing you want is your site loading and it has broken image links everywhere. That's no good. So you don't want to actually use other people's images. There's a time and a place for that, okay? But um, we're going to talk about how to do it without using their images, okay? Or without using their server. So let's go back to the lizards. And now I can actually download this image, right? So right click on it, save image as, and I'm going to download it right to my desktop, which is where my file is. I'm just going to call it lizard. Uh, I guess JPEG, okay? So now on my desktop, there it is. You can see it. And in my code, Here's what I'm going to say. Instead of all this, I have to tell it where that file is and what it's called. Well, where is that file? It's on my desktop, right? Well, where is the file that's trying to find it? Where's this lizard.html file? Also on my desktop. So if I just give it the name, lizard.jpg, I just say, hey, look wherever you are for lizard, and you'll find it. Wherever you are is wherever this file is, the, the black screen here, wherever that is, which happens to be right here, right? That's where it's at. So that's enough for it to find it. So when I refresh, it'll be fabulous and there'll be a lizard there again, okay? But now it's on my local machine or eventually on your web server, your own web server. Now, don't just steal people's images and put them on your server, right? You have to get permission to do all that kind of stuff, okay? Okay, one last thing I wanna show you that has to do with sort of file paths with, with images on the desktop here. Let's say that I had a folder called images, 
and I put the lizard in there, okay? Now, my code is wrong, because my code says, hey, HTML file, look where you are for a file called lizards. Well, where I, the HTML file, it, am, there's no lizard file, right? So I have to tell it, oh, sorry, don't look where you are, look where you are, don't look where you are for the lizard, look where you are for a folder called images, then look inside the images folder and find lizard. So I tell it by doing images, like that. So look in the folder called images, and then slash means go, you know, dig down one level, and then you'll find the lizard. So now if I refresh, well, let me show you what it's like without, without it. It's broken, okay? And I put that in there, that'll fix it. That whole idea is, is about file paths, which we have a whole other day we're gonna deal with file paths because they're tricky. For now, that's good enough, okay? You don't have to worry too much about it. Okay, so no more new tags today. We're gonna learn another attribute or two and um, a thing that's sort of like a tag, but not really. But here's the important thing. Take this lizard example here. Let's say you work for a company and they decide, hey, we're gonna be publishing a web page. We need you, the web designer or web programmer, to build it. And it's gonna be about lizards. And we don't have the content yet. Nobody's written the content yet. And we have some images we're gonna use, but we don't have the images yet. The photographer's still out chasing down lizards, trying to take their pictures or whatever, right? And so we don't have all this stuff yet, but I still need you to build the layout of the web page. So what do you need to do? You need to get some placeholder images, right? Because you have to lay everything out. And if you don't know how big the text is gonna be, then you can't lay it out. So the copy editors say, well, yeah, it's gonna be four paragraphs and it'd be probably 100 words a paragraph. So now you have a rough idea of how much text is and how much space is gonna take up, right? So what you can do while you're waiting for them is you can put placeholder images. Back in the day, I would just go onto Google and I would download an image and, and crop it to the right size. You know, they said it's supposed to be 100 by 100, so I'll crop, I'll find a 100 by 100 image and I'll use it. Well, now there's a lot of tools for developers that make that so much easier. So, here we go. One tool, you guys know the actor Bill Murray? from Ghostbusters and Groundhog Day, right? There's a website that's dedicated to filling your web page with images of Bill Murray, right? It's called Phil Murray, as in Phil, so www.philmurray.com. And then you put the dimensions you want. So I want a 200 by 400 picture, okay? Now I refresh and behold, there's a picture of Bill Murray right there, okay? And it's 200 by 400. Why is that useful? Because the copy editors told me, hey, you need to block out 200 by 400. We're gonna have an image right there of a lizard. We don't have the image yet, so we just put a placeholder there. Finally, someday when the copy people or the photo photographer comes, they give me the image, I upload it to the server and I put the link to it in here. But for now, we'll just do a placeholder, okay? There's lots of places that there's, there's another website called Lorem Pixum, which you picks random pictures, okay? And lots of different ones. All right, let's just look at that one real quick. So if you go into the modules, in module one under resources, you'll see these placeholders. There's one right here called Lorem Pixum. And you just use, you use this URL right here, pixum.photos, and then you put a number, okay? So let's put another image there, but we'll do that one. So it's gonna be a random photo, 200 by 300 photo. Let's see what it looks like. Maybe it'll be a lizard, that'd be cool. I think if you refresh it, it changes every time, yeah. So it's just a random picture every time, okay? Lots of different ones. Okay, so that's images. Also, the text. So they told me that it's gonna be, you know, a couple paragraphs, and it's gonna be some, you know, 100 words per paragraph. So I need to come up with 100, words of fake text, right? Well, there's fake text generators out there, right? So, lorem ipsum, that's actually Latin, um, and I don't remember what it means, but what we use it for in our world is we use it for fake text, okay? So if I just go here, here's a lorem ipsum generator, and right there, there's a bunch of lorem ipsum text. I can say how many paragraphs I want, so I just want one paragraph, click generate, and then click copy, generates it, I click copy, and I just paste it right in here, 
and then I close out my paragraph tag. That's it. Easy. So now I have this fake text that's the right length-ish. There you go. There's the text. Okay. Now notice how ugly this is getting here. Our web page is very ugly, right? And remember, when this stuff was first designed, it was just meant to lay out documents, Word documents, and, and make them to where they're linkable. YouTube wasn't even a thing back then, right? So you wouldn't be embedding videos. We're going to learn all about how to make this look pretty when we get to CSS. But for now, we're going to leave it this way, okay? Now, instead of lorem ipsum, I prefer bacon ipsum. That's my favorite, okay? So we go to baconipsum.com, and it generates fake text, but all the words are bacon-related, right? So all meat-related. So give me bacon. So now we have all these funny things like, um, you know, shank, ribs, short ribs, right? Ball tip, all kinds of different things, okay? So just paste that in there instead. That's what I use. If you don't like that, that's fine. Don't use it. Uh, then I can copy and paste that a bunch of times if I'm going to have multiple paragraphs, right? Let's take a look at it. There you go. Okay, now at least I can have an idea of how much space the text is going to take up. When I use my style sheets, I'm going to change the font size and the, the font type and so forth, okay? All right, what questions do we have about all this stuff? Good? Okay. Here is the weird tag that I told you is sort of not really a tag, okay? It's debatable. And it's it goes right here at the very beginning, doc type. HTML, okay? So don't think of this as, I told you a minute ago, don't put stuff outside of these tags, right? And here I am putting something outside of these tags. So this, this is not quite an exception. If you're gonna look at it that way, it's, it's an exception to the rule. But the reason I say this, this isn't really a tag. It's just how you inform what is gonna be following in the document. So you're telling the browser which version of HTML is about to come, okay? so. There's many versions of HTML. If we go back to W3Schools and we go to just the tags is where I meant to go. Okay, and you see the very first one right here, doc type, or the second one. Down here, there's other versions. If you wanted to enforce the rules of HTML4, that would be the doc type that you would use right there. Okay? You would use that. If you wanted to enforce the rules of XHTML 1.1, then this would be your doc type. So this is pre-code. You're just warning the browser what rules to enforce when they start reading, when the browser starts reading the HTML. You're warning what rules to enforce. Well, what do we want to enforce? We want to enforce the current version of HTML, which is just, all you gotta do is put plain HTML, which implies HTML5. That's the current version, okay? So that needs to be in there. Good? Okay. Look at our page one last time, maybe. And notice right here where it says lizards.html at the top, you see that, in the tab up there? You actually have control over what that says. And that goes in the head. The reason it goes in the head is because it's actually not the content of the page, it's information about the page, right? So this is the title tag, and we're just gonna say all about lizards or whatever okay so we're just going to leave that there and now when i refresh it watch the watch the tab up here when i refresh there we go so now it says all about lizards so we change the title for now and probably for another month this is the only tag that you will use in the head that's it later you'll learn about how to link a style sheet and put it in there how to link your javascript how to put JavaScript code and, and, and all this other stuff in there. But for now, that's the only one you need to worry about, okay? And then last but not least, the very important thing is to distinguish what language the, the text is going to be in. In this case, it's some random stuff, but it is English. So in your HTML tag, we use the attribute called lang, and we put in for English. You could put fr for French or whatever, okay? So if you speak another language, feel free to change that, okay? All right, any questions about anything we've looked at here? Good? So what I'm gonna do now is clean up this, get rid of a lot of this junk here, and we'll just change this paragraph here. This is a paragraph. 
and I'll get rid of one, one of the images there. And I'll even get rid of the strong here. We'll just make lizards. Simple, simple page. What I want you guys to do in just a minute is I want you to recreate this page. But use your own. I don't want you to just copy what's on the screen, okay? I'm leaving it there for a guide so you can see it. But make your page about you or about some subject or whatever. And I don't want any real text. This is this is a paragraph is good enough. But make the title, you know, all about me or all about whatever band you like or whatever. Find an, a video to embed that's related to what it is and use Phil Murray or download an image if you'd like. And then uh, I'm going to come around and look at it and make sure that uh, you got it all working. But before that, you guys need a text editor, right? So Notepad++ is the, the one I prefer. If you're on a PC, I would recommend that one. So if we go in here to the modules again, and you go to today's lecture, Tags, Attributes, and Values, there's a link right here at the bottom called Download Install Notepad++. So click on that, download it, and install it, and uh, just use the very first one at the top. Of once you click on that link, there's a whole bunch of different ones. Use the first one, and then install it. Now, when you install it, you will not have a black background like mine. It'll be white. If you want to change that, I'll show you how to change it after you get it installed. But here's the other thing I really wanted to show you. This web page exists on my computer. This is my fabulous, beautiful web page about lizards. But I want to share it with the world. I want the world to know about my lizard page, right? Well, they don't know about my lizard page because I don't have it uploaded to, to the world. So you need a server for that. You have an upcoming assignment, which is set up a server, which I think is due Sunday, right? Some of you have already done it. So I've already got a server set up and everything, obviously. So I'm going to show you how this roughly works, and you'll learn more about this as we go on. So I'm going to upload it to my, I have a website called Stone Cold Professor. I'm going to upload it to there. Okay, so right now it's on my desktop. I'm just literally going to take this lizards thing and drag it over here to my folder up on my server. And now if I go to my live URL, stonecoldprofessor.com slash lizards.html, there's my lizard page. Right there, live, right? the whole world can see it now. Anybody that's got a web browser can see that page. So the next couple weeks, it's learning more tags and more tags and more tags and then putting it into practice and learning more tags and putting it into practice, okay? Then we stop with HTML and we move on to CSS, which is the more exciting part for sure. But you gotta understand the structure first. So next time we meet, we will look at how to make tables how to make bullet points, and how to do a bunch of other stuff like that, okay? All right, any questions about what we covered today?